Coming up on News 2, police are investigating a string of robberies. Meanwhile, two female minors reported missing are found. Governor John DeYoung said he is prepared to honor the letter of the law, which in July reinstates an 8% salary cut government employees were forced to undergo. Plus, we are officially in the hurricane season. As reported, this season is predicted to be a very active one. Some tips as you prepare. Hello, welcome and thanks for joining us on this edition of News 2. I'm Sandra Guman Singh. Well, we are in the hurricane season officially. As reported, this hurricane season is predicted to be a very active one between June 1st and November. Bernie kicks off the show with a look at hurricane season 2013. Well, it's hard to believe that the hurricane season is here. We want to look back to last season, 2012. You'll notice most of the storms were in the Atlantic. There were quite a few storms. I believe 19 is where we ended things. The two biggest storms, of course, Isaac, which made landfall across southern parts of Louisiana, and then, of course, uh, Hurricane Sandy, which hit southern Cuba and then made a direct left turn or west move right into New Jersey. The only storm we really had to deal with was Raphael late in the season in October, but that stayed relatively uh, far away to our east, and it was a tropical storm as it did so. As far as what we are forecasting here at AccuWeather, we're looking at 16 named storms, hurricanes and tropical storms, eight hurricanes, major hurricanes, we're looking at four, and for the most part, we are talking about an above normal season. As far as us here in the Virgin Islands, here are some of the highlights. An above normal year because we have warm waters in the Atlantic, and we don't have an El Nino, so that will increase the threat here in the Virgin Islands, and the most likely time frame that we would be looking at would be late September into October. Thanks for that, Bernie. Well, Governor John B. Young is calling on senators to tackle the problems of the fiscal crisis. The executive budget was due May 30th, but the governor says he needs more time. The salary cuts that were made three years ago are set to be reinstated, but officials maintain without some action they won't be possible. News News Erica Parsons has more. You know, the VI government had to step in last week to help Wildaway Hospital make payroll, but according to the administration, their financial situation is not much better than the cash-strapped hospitals. And because of that, Governor DeYoung says he's delaying submitting the 2014 budget. In a letter to Senate President Sean Michael Malone, Governor DeYoung wrote that he's going to be late getting the fiscal year 2014's proposed budget to the 30th legislature. Two weeks late. He says because of this year's continuing budget shortfalls, the executive branch needs more time to come up with the best options for the government. And on top of those fiscal struggles, the 8% salary cuts from three years ago are slated to be reinstated next month, but there might not be enough money to do that. We'll make one payroll and then we'll be in trouble. The governor says he's been routinely meeting with senators about the poor state of the government's finances and suggested delaying reinstatement of the 8%, but reportedly Senator Malone didn't think it wise. He doesn't think any senator will be willing to put forth the legislation. It was their proposal. You know, underfunding health insurance last year was their idea, not mine. We submitted a budget to cover it. They, they decided not to. There's a $20 million deficit between now and before the new fiscal year starts in October. The governor says he's calling on the lawmakers to apply basic math principles and work to address the problem. We have had discussions with the senators. I've had meetings that we have got to do something different. If we don't, then... The, the ramifications aren't worth it, and we can address this. We just need to be able to implement those two things, and we can deal with the situation. Erica Parsons, News 2. Governor DeYoung did apologize for the delay in submitting the executive budget. By law, the governor is required to submit his spending plan by May 30th. He said he'll turn it in by June 14th. Criminal Investigation Bureau detectives are investigating the fatal shooting of 37-year-old Andy J. Peters, also known as Panquito. That occurred this morning, June 3rd, in the Lorraine Village Apartments in Estate Grove Place. About 10.15 a.m., police on the scene found the unresponsive body of Peters on the ground 
next to a white SUV. EMTs on the scene could not find any vital signs on the victim. Forensic technicians collected several spent shell casings from the area. A monitoring bracelet was attached to Peters' left ankle. Police said Peters was awaiting trial for a 2011 gun possession charge and was incarcerated for more than a decade following a 1996 first-degree murder conviction. Police on St. Thomas are investigating robberies and assault, various ones. On June 1st, about 2 a.m., 25-year-old male victim told police he was walking near Club 75 when he heard shots being fired. He said he ran toward the Market Square and noticed that he had been shot in his hand. Also on June 1st at the Rod Convenience Store on Gamble Gata, the owner told police that about 6.40 a.m., a young Hispanic male came in and started shopping. A few minutes later, a masked Hispanic male came into the store and pointed his handgun at the customer and began striking him with the gun. Another armed masked suspect entered the store and demanded money from the cash register, which he was given, along with about $400 in phone cards. All three fled the area. And a woman told police she was walking on the Altona Road about 9.25 p.m. on May 31st when she was approached by a slim male wearing a dark-colored dark hoodie over his head who pointed a small handgun at her. The woman said she began running and dropped her purse, which he picked up. Meanwhile, police on St. Croix continue to investigate a robbery that occurred at Super Safe Supermarket in Estate Concordia a few minutes before 8 p.m. May 30th. Police were told that a lone gunman came into the store and demanded money. Owner and another store employee told police that they were inside the store when a Hispanic man wearing a long-sleeved black hoodie and a dark-colored bandana covering his nose and mouth pointed a weapon at them and asked them to empty the cash register and give him all the go phone cards. The store owners complied. The suspect exited the store and walked in an easterly direction with an undetermined amount of cash and about $30 in phone cards. Police issued an all-points bulletin on the suspect and conducted an investigation at the scene. This case will be followed up by the Criminal Investigation Bureau. Police said two women found dead from gunshot wounds in a private residence at Estate Smithfield on St. Croix have been identified as 56-year-old Kathy Weichel and 43-year-old Tammy Zollner. Police were notified of the deaths a few minutes before 11 p.m. on May 28th by a male individual who told police that he and one of the deceased females have been involved in a relationship for the past months, four months. He said his girlfriend went to collect some of her belongings from her former girlfriend's home. The male went to the home and saw the two females unresponsive. Both females suffered gunshot wounds and a firearm was found on the scene. 15-year-old Angelette Calvin and 16-year-old Ras Jahida Escobar were both taken into custody around 4 a.m. early Saturday. The two minors had been reported missing a week ago. Officers say they spotted the runaway minors at the Jam Time nightclub in Estate Mountain and detained them. They said Calvin was wearing a wig and Escobar had her hair in a ponytail. Meanwhile, the search is still on for Tarika Alexander. Alexander is about six feet tall and weighs 190 pounds. 64 West Center at the University of the Virgin Islands is officially open. That's the new building constructed to house UVI's Research and Technology Park on St. Croix. The construction took almost two years to complete and will provide space for student classrooms, tenants, rental space, and the tech park's corporate offices. The building is a completely green facility and designed to offer state-of-the-art technologies as well as direct high-speed network access to tenants. This is a wonderful and exciting day uh, for the park, uh, but it is also an exciting and wonderful day for the university. This will be a building where those who are part of economic development and those who are a part of a knowledge-based industry will be working hand in hand, will be living next door to students who are learning about biology and chemistry and physics, faculty members who are engaged in research. We will have new laboratories in this building that will allow the St. Croix campus to be able to explore more science uh, courses than we have been able to in the past. 
Well, it's been more than three years since private first class Bradley Manning was arrested in Iraq. Government prosecutors are trying to prove he aided the enemy when he handed over classified documents to WikiLeaks. Manning's attorneys argue he leaked the material believing he was making the world a better place. Danielle Nottingham reports from just outside Fort Meade in Maryland. A couple dozen protesters turned up in the rain outside Fort Meade to support private first class Bradley Manning. Inside the military courtroom, Manning's trial for leaking hundreds of thousands of classified documents got underway. He faces 21 counts in all, including aiding the enemy. Prosecutors said this is a case about, quote, what happens when arrogance meets access to sensitive information. The trial at Fort Meade is expected to take three months because so much of the evidence is classified. The judge has already said that large portions of the proceeding will be closed to the public and the media. Manning started downloading classified information shortly after he arrived in Iraq in 2009. He has already admitted handing over more than 700,000 documents to the WikiLeaks website and pleaded guilty to lesser charges. During opening statements, Manning's defense attorney said the 25-year-old was young, naive, but good intentioned. He argued Manning was trying to expose the human costs of the wars in Iraq and Afghanistan and did not believe the information he leaked would harm the U.S. Among the documents leaked were Iraq War civilian casualty numbers that differed from those the Pentagon released, as well as a video of a U.S. Apache helicopter attack that killed civilians. Danielle Nottingham, CBS News, Odenton, Maryland. Meanwhile, keeping our eye on the economy, lawyers for the U.S. government say Apple is a corporate bully that tried to fix prices on e-books. The opening statement came during the start of a civil trial in Manhattan today. The government claims Apple conspired with major book publishers to force Amazon.com to raise prices so Apple's e-books could compete. Apple's attorneys claim the case is based on faulty assumptions. This is the New York Stock Exchange with Scotiabank Stock Market Watch. Everything up, the Dow, NASDAQ, S&P, the Dow 138, NASDAQ 9, S&P also 9. Coming up on New Sioux, as we mentioned earlier, we are officially in the hurricane season as reported. It's predicted to be a very active one between June 1st and November. Have you made your preparations? We have some updates coming up next. And as we reported earlier, we are officially in the hurricane season. And as reported, this hurricane season is predicted to be a very active one between June 1st to November. Have you completed your preparations? The experts offer some tips. The 2013 hurricane season has begun, and it promises to be very active. As reported by the National Oceanic and Atmospheric Association, or NOAA, and News 2's weather forecaster, Bernie Reno. What we are forecasting here at AccuWeather, we're looking at 16 named storms, hurricanes and tropical storms, eight hurricanes, major hurricanes, we're looking at four, and for the most part, we are talking about an above normal season. As far as us here in the Virgin Islands, here are some of the highlights. An above normal year because we have warm waters in the Atlantic and we don't have an El Nino, so that will increase the threat here in the Virgin Islands. The Virgin Islands Territorial Emergency Management Agency's director, Elton Lewis, reminds us that in previous years we have had few falls alarms. However, he says this forecast should not be met with a half-hearted response. We must all take it very seriously and commit to prepare. Get a kit. Uh, to make a plan for themselves and the family and to be informed. Listen to uh, TV2 such as yourself on the radio for information that's going to be coming out on a regular basis by, by TEMA and uh, the National Water Service with, res with regards to um, this year prediction. Here are some other tips. While emergency plans may be different for each family depending on location, disaster supply kits run pretty much the same. According to the American Red Cross, a kit should have Canned foods, a gallon of water per person for three to five days, flashlights, batteries, a radio, some cash, any necessary medications, and of course, it never hurts to have a fully stocked first aid kit on hand. Once you've stocked up on the essentials, disaster experts say 
Don't forget about the paperwork. Important documents such as passports, social security cards, and family records should be stored in a waterproof container. In the case of the uncertainty of cell phone use after a hurricane, it's also important to have telephone numbers written out on paper. Securing your home is a top priority as well. Install permanent shutters or plywood on your windows and sliding glass doors. Most importantly, prepare a personal evacuation plan. As human, um, we get the information and um, within the next week or two, well, they don't really remember. So with the PSAs, the public service announcements and in the newspaper, uh, we are big now in the social media. Uh, you can visit Vitima at uh, Facebook, uh, Twitter, uh, uh, YouTube. Um, so that's, we are trying to do everything uh, we can by staying current and using all of the social media that's available to us to get the word out. Now be sure to register for VI Alerts for free instant public safety alerts and notification via text message, email or fax. You can register at www.vitima.gov. And of course, Bernie will be keeping an eye on the tropics and providing us with some updates. The Virgin Islands National Guard will be hosting an all hazards coordination workshop on June 4th to the 5th at the 210th Regional Training Institute at the Estate Bethlehem Compound on St. Croix from 9 a.m. to 5 p.m. on both days. It is intended to help the National Guard and government and non-governmental -government agencies coordinate their first response capabilities in response to an all hazards event here in the territory. Representatives from FEMA, National Guard Bureau, and U.S. Northern Command representatives from Mississippi, New Jersey, Puerto Rico, Delaware, Washington, D.C., Kansas, Louisiana, West Virginia, and Florida National Guards, Vitima, VIPD, VI Fire Service, CPNR, and Public Works will also be in attendance. Well, the Virgin Islands Department of Health is warning that the chances for dengue fever are greater during the hurricane season, which started this month. Health issued a dengue alert since there are more rains during June to November, and more rains mean more mosquitoes. Officials say dengue is transmitted by mosquitoes and residents and visitors need to take precautions against being bitten once dengue is in the community. Dengue symptoms mimic the flu but include high fever, rash, headaches, pain behind the eyes and joint and body pain. Seek medical help immediately if you suspect dengue. Stick around, your news to AccuWeather forecast is coming up next.